Good to be here. Uh, I hope everyone can see my SOLIDWORKS screen. I am showing it right now. Um, so today's topic is going to be about turning. Um, kind of the basics of it. We're not going to cover uh, too much in depth because it's really just a, a quick overview. There's only so much you can do within half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, but the idea is to get you kind of rolling with it, uh, understanding like some of the key things that most guys do uh, when they're actually turning. Um, you know, when, they, when they're doing it in the shop. So uh, we'll cover some of that. So, so uh, let me do this. Um, no PowerPoints today. I uh, When I dig deep into these things, or not too deep, but um, we pretty much go through the cam uh, and see it in action. So you won't be seeing pages with uh, information or points. Uh, I want you to see it uh, uh, working. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and we have a smaller crowd today. so. Uh, uh, it's all good if you guys want to just chime in or ask a question. So, all right, um, let me just go ahead and open up a simple part here. So, if you um, uh, have a lathe and you have SolidWorks Cam Pro, you have access to turning. And this is a, a very simple part here that we see. And I'm going to do a general workflow to start. So, so this is how you would uh, set up and start with uh, turning it within SolidWorks Cam Pro. So like milling, you would uh, start by defining the machine. And I'll go ahead and select a turn single turret. I happen to have everything available because I have full suite of CamWorks. But uh, if you have SolidWorks Cam Pro, you probably would only see just the turning option here. So I pick the machine and then the post processor. And I can pick any one of them. So I'll just say ST20 for now. So for me, that's good enough. If you also have multiple tool cribs, you can go in here and select the one that you want to down here. But uh, for, for demonstrations, we're just going to stick with a machine and a post processor for now. All right. Um, most of the time when you do milling, you would you know jump into either setting a coordinate system or stock. For turning, it's, it's not necessary all the time. Uh, turning is usually center line and at the face of your material or your, your part of it. So it automatically snaps to that point. So oftentimes I just ignore the coordinate system. It's just automatically going to go there. But if you need to move this about, you can go ahead and do so by uh, you know, pulling up the coordinate system, uh, picking an entity if you need to, or uh, use a part vertex or the stock uh, vertex. I just uh, I, I kind of went through the coordinate system. There wasn't too much to do because typically you are going to be center line and then at the face of your part. So that's where I kept it at. Uh, next, I'm going to go through the stock manager, and let me move this over. I don't have to deal with that. Um, stock manager, I mean, it's turning, so it's usually tube stock or uh, bar stock. Maybe you have hex or something like that. It's it's possible. But uh, for the most part, uh, it's, it's an easy cylinder uh, uh, stock, and you can change the parameters. The size of your stock is uh, defined here in this first set of parameters. But you can also offset from your part itself. So you have an OD of, say, this size. You can add 100,000 to that OD and uh, keep it that way. And for me, and this is a particularly important for uh, turning guys, um, if you do uh, parts over and over again and you just have a facing operation that you, let's say you have a bar feeder and you always remove about 200,000 stock upon every new part, this is your opportunity to, to set that. So you can put Point two here for your face, and your facing operation will remove about 200,000 stock before uh, getting to the face. So if you remove 100,000, put 100,000 here. If you move 60,000, just do that here. So this is because the cam is aware of stock, it will remove as much as possible to get to the face, and this is their place to do so. So I'll put point one just to keep it consistent. And also on the back side, uh, you can do that too. So if you had to face on the back side, you do that, or uh, if you had to cut off, um, you know, leave enough stock for that. So this should be good enough for now. And also the material, this is here, you can do that. Uh, very quickly, a couple other stock type uh, options you have. You can revolve from a sketch if need be. You can uh, take a 2D uh, revolve from a work in progress file. So uh, if you are familiar with work in progress, as you're creating your part, you can save uh, the model and the sketch along with it. Um, as a work in progress so that if you do a second operation, the stock is, is based off of that. 
I could, we could probably demonstrate that in a different uh, uh, webinar, but today it's not going to be covered right now. And then upload an STL. So if you have castings, go ahead and pull that in there or use your uh, part file. So green check to accept and it should be easy. Now this actually has a line here uh, or a sketch uh, representing what could have been a stock. And I'll do that real quick right now. So let's go ahead and just revolve from a sketch and I will pull this sketch one or actually stock profile, excuse me. And that will make my stock here. So I, I chose from this list down here and uh, that should do it. So if I take a look here and let me just open up my uh, stock so I can display this and I wanna see a translucent representation of my stock. So there we go. All right. Okay, so coordinate system and stock is uh, set up. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and do one of two things. You can manually start creating features because SolidWorks CAM uh, is a, has a really strong feature-based uh, machining approach where you create the features first and then the strategies get applied. Or, or you know, and that's where um, you can create the features or you can let the CAM automatically recognize them. You can have them extract the features from there. So I'll do that for now. And extracting features usually gives you about anywhere between 50 to 75% of what you need, depending on the complexity of your part. Um, and that's, that's a start off point. Turning is a little different from milling. You can't just rely on all the profiles that they give you, because the reality is we probably want to control you know, where it goes, extend certain lines. Um, if you've done turning like I have, you probably end up cheating or lying to the geometry a little bit to get what you want. And same applies here within the cam world. So here, on a very basic level, I've got a facing feature. So this line, green line, represents the facing. This OD uh, is just a simple profile contour that represents the entire OD. And I got a groove here. And on the back side, if I needed to do a second setup, I could face off over there. It, that's what it automatically gave you. You may or may not want to use that. Um, if you wanted to, you could possibly uh, edit the uh, features. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in a bit. But right now, we could pretend that this is uh, you know, how we want to go. So we extracted the features. We'll generate the operations. And with these operations, they are based on the strategies that were assigned to the features, rough finish, rough finish. And these are things that you can change by going through the parameters here. So I right click on any feature here and the parameters show the strategies that are available for those features. These are pretty much uh, out of the box strategies, but you can create your own, make custom ones. So right now we're just gonna gloss over a lot of this uh, and move on towards a finished product. So we just generated the operation plan. I go to my second tab here, uh, which has the uh, operations. And they're blue right now because no tool paths have been generated yet. So it shows you the tool uh, choices. So there's a face, for the face rough and finish, it's decided to use an 80 degree uh, diamond tool, which is essentially a C and MG. Uh, this is a D and MG, 55 degrees. Same C, same D for uh, OD. And then grooving uses a 118 groove uh, tool. And then you have a uh, second set for the back side. Okay. So if you notice that the chuck is, uh, not ideal, right? If we wanted to turn the entire thing, we are probably going to be colliding with the chuck. Uh, I'm going to show you how to change that in a bit. But for now, um, assuming we had everything set up and it's all right, and if we wanted to get into the parameters to make sure we're good, I can double click on any one of these operations, like say my turn roughing on the OD, and it'll bring me to the parameters. So I can go ahead and control uh, depths of cuts, um, how I want to lead in or step in, uh, the allowances on X or Z, uh, various things. And there's a feed and speeds tab here. You can even change the uh, tool type that you want. You can um, go about and go to your tool crib and switch tools to a different type of tool if you wanted to. Uh, all the parameters here, oh, we can't go over to them all, but they are you know, ready and accessible for you just by double clicking on the operation or right clicking and go to add a definition. All right. So assuming that you have all of your tool paths um, or the parameters set, you can generate the tool paths. 
I tend to generate first and then then go through the parameters just because I want to see what it's doing and then uh, edit from there. So if I look at this, face rough, uh, face finish, turn rough, turn finish, uh, groove, pretty generic and pretty simple. Okay, so that's kind of the basics or the general workflow of uh, turning. You're gonna you know go through all of these buttons here and eventually get to it. The stuff in between. The, um, the editing and the setting up, um, I'm going to show you uh, in a little bit here. So first off, uh, manipulating the features. Let's go back to our feature tree here, the first tab. Uh, if I wanted to manipulate this OD feature, we can uh, go in there and edit the definition. And it's automatically designated as an OD feature, and this is the strategy. But you can actually uh, change the uh, contour lines, or at least uh, select where you want to go. This has picked up everything, and that's not ideal right now. We happen to have a chuck holding onto the part right here. This is where you can go ahead and, and control what you want to cut. So I can go ahead and say remove all the entities that I chose, and we're going to go ahead and do it ourselves. So we can click this line right here, if I can get to it. Yep. So it's green, even though it's a uh, kind of a similar color as blue, so it's kind of tough to see sometimes. And I can go to the very uh, last cut that I want to uh, do, which is could be this face and then move it on up, or I can click each one of these segments individually. But I'll just click right here, and we will have it uh, done that way. So potentially here, maybe I'll just turn up to this point and have it go up. Uh, we would leave this you know, radius portion for another operation. Most likely not. You probably want to turn the whole thing up to this point, but we have a chuck in the way. We'll fix that. But this is a quick and easy uh, way to uh, edit your um, your contour. These contours are based off of typically when you do extract machine with features, a revolve profile. So it would actually revolve this this part, and then it would give you this contour line. There is an option if you were to manually create this where you can actually have it. Um, be kind of a section, so it would cut this in half, and it would the contour would be based off of the uh, cutout. Uh, so I'm just going to say OK, and you can see that the OD feature has changed. And if I go back to the operation now, you can also see that the uh, the tool paths have changed to go along with it. Okay, so that's a little bit backwards. Normally you'd have the feature built the way you want first, and then generate, but just showing you that uh, this would, could work this way too. So, all right. Now, if I wanted to not base my turning operation off of you know whatever contours it gives me, you can actually use a sketch. So you can ignore this 3D model altogether and have a sketch-driven uh, toolpath. So well, we can quickly do that right now. I'm going to create. We're manually creating a feature now. I'm going to create a turn feature. Okay. And I'm going to conveniently just take this sketch that was supposed to represent the stock and use that. All right. So now I have the options to define my features in, to whatever it would be. So I can drop down and see that there's OD, ID, grooves, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to do an OD here. Strategy will stick with the same thing. Um, like I mentioned before, you can section this off, but I do want to do revolve. All right. And then here, you can actually choose an entire uh, sketch here, or let's just pick lines. Let's go here, 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 and here. Oh, let's make sure my entities box is active. So if I go to this stock profile and start clicking, you can see that it's starting to pick up the lines here. And let's just pretend that that's good enough, right? So we'll say that that is my sketch line. Or that is my um, my feature line here. This is the contour I wanted to follow, and you could generate that operation, and it would it won't it, right now it won't machine this because there's no stock to do that. But let's just go ahead and add stock. I'll go back, make this round bar stock now, and we'll say yes. Update everything, and let's generate that toolpath. Let's see here. Let's uh, generate 
operations. So we regenerate everything and then generate tool paths. Okay. And seems like I didn't pick up this sketch line. Not sure why. I'd have to see uh, why I didn't do that. So that is how to pick a sketch. Uh, I would have to check and see uh, whether or not uh, there's something else that's uh, blocking it. Usually, this is not the ideal way to go backwards and then um, build it. But uh, usually, you start from scratch, and it works fine. But uh, at least the feature is built. It may not have uh, an operation that's uh, functional right now, which means we just have to build it. So all right, um, let's move on from the first model. And I'm going to bring up a second model here. And we'll probably try another sketch thing uh, later on if we have the time. So, OK, I'm going to open up this part right here. All right, uh, this is a little bit more complex, but still nothing uh, too fancy. So here's where I'm going to show you a little bit about chuck placement and uh, what we saw before. So I'll just very quickly define the machine and, and go through what we had done before. So I'll select uh, this lathe here, a bit of my post, and just pick anything. It doesn't really matter at this point. All right, and let's just extract features. So I've got these right here. I'm going to generate the operations for it. So we were working on just creating features and then going through the operations. But one of the important parts about turning is uh, actually uh, setting up the part itself with the chuck. So the setup tab or the setup options here. So when you're in your operations tree, you want to go ahead and, act and uh, activate or edit your definition for the uh, setup here. And this gives you the opportunity to do uh, a couple things. First, change your chuck fixture location. So right here in this tab, this uh, clamping location, I can move this back and forward depending on you know where I want it to be to represent what you have in the machine. And go here and push it back. And we could say that, oh, it's holding on some kind of bar stock, so this is extended out. That way, it should be able to machine everything without interfering with this chuck. So I'll set that. Now, you don't have to do this. Uh, this is purely just for representation. But you can make this an active tool for you. You can actually uh, set a parameter to avoid the chuck uh, if it is actually you know, set up that way in your machine. So that would be in the Advanced tab here. Okay. So here is a, is a, a nice little button here where it allows you to avoid any chuck or fixture uh, present within the uh, the part here. So if I click Enable, it gives me the option to set a clearance value. I could put 0.1. It will avoid the chuck by 100 thou. Okay. In this case, it's not applicable because the chuck is clear of the part. But if I were to move it forward, again, we'll do that. And if this is on, it should be able to do that. Now, you're not done yet. Anything, anytime you see this. Paintbrush, it means apply to all. So the rules of this uh, chuck engagement, um, you need to apply to all the operations within that setup so that everything is consistent. I'll click that, and we will go ahead and uh, write it to all the operations. So I'll say OK here. We're going to generate the tool paths. And you should see some uh, chuck avoidance. Uh, right now, we don't have stock to even cut to get to that. So let's add some stock. Let's go over here and add about 100 thou. Say green check. And then we'll regenerate our tool paths to represent that. And you should see that it's now stopped itself just shy of the chuck by 100 thou. So this is a way for you to kind of just globally set your limits. So if you don't feel like you know, uh, making sure your feature chains are you know, going to an exact spot, you can also define that um, avoidance uh, parameter and have every single OD tool and ID, depending on if it's if it's within the setup, it will uh, they will all stop at the same place. So that's uh, something for you to consider here. Now, a couple things that I uh, I used to do when um, when I was programming uh, lades is I would uh, always 
consider how burrs are going to develop on uh, on the part. So some of it has to do with the fact that, you know, if we stop the part, so let's say on this part right here, we'll go back to our feature. Let's go to OD right here. And let's edit the definition of this OD. And we'll just uh, clear everything. We'll go from the front to here. And we can pretend that we're only going to do up to this point. And we have uh, some material left on the OD here, even though we're stopping here. So what would happen is this, and you'll probably see it. So you'll see that it stops right here and it moves on up. Now, fortunately, we have some extra parameters in the, uh, the operation that's rolling over a tad um, so that you know, you, you're not really leaving so much of a, a, a corner here. So if you were to follow up with the second uh, line coming across, you're not going to leave too much of a burr. But if you did stop the operation right here and went straight up, there's always the possibility of a step if there's some kind of mismatch, uh, something of that nature. So what you can do is go into your parameters here. I just double click. And the ability to extend feature lines is uh, something that I find useful. So on this feature options here, you can extend the length of that last segment. So if I wanted to, I can go in here and extend this by 100 thou, and I'll preview that. And you can see it's moved past that. So if I were to take a, a single turn coming back this way, uh, maybe my burr, burr won't be so bad. So that is a, a nice way to do that. And you don't have to extend tangentially. You can also override and extend along certain axes, so along Z or X. But we are going to uh, keep with this. So that's one of the things that was helpful for me. Now, uh, also, as you can see here, this is my rough pass. And it's an aware of the geometry of your tool. So this uh, tool was a CNMG. And it's usually 80 degrees with about 50, 15 degrees on the backside. So it can only cut this much. And depending if you want that, you can keep it that way. Or you can also make this uh, skip over undercuts. So this was something that was useful. Uh, unchecking this undercut allows you to just ignore undercuts. So in some cases, that's useful and that would be helpful with um, not having to do some weird uh, uh, cuts out of the part just to follow up with the second tool. So that uh, that's there. And hopefully, you have a second tool that is able to clean up this right here. In this case, the DNMG should do just fine. All right. So the, that's pretty much it for this model. I just want to show a little bit of how to change the chuck placement, the uh, extending some features. So you can extend on the beginning and start of the lines and uh, negating the uh, undercuts if, if necessary. And also the Z level setups. So if you have a setup and you want to stop your, uh, your, your turning operations at a certain point, we go right here, go to edit definition, I think I actually forgot to show you guys that. So let's do that right now. We'll go to edit definition of the setup. And we did this right here, the enable. But we could also set the limits of our entire uh, turning operations within that setup to whatever point we want it to be. So right now it's set to work in progress, but I can go user defined. And we can end all of our turning operations to uh, this point or wherever, let's just say up to here, okay? And you'll see that's updated the position here. Say okay. And if I say okay here, we'll regenerate all of our tool paths. Let's go ahead and regenerate everything here. Excuse me. Let me actually hit that paintbrush because um, we need to write it to all. Say okay there. Regenerate just in case. And then now you can see that uh, it's, pushed all of our toolpaths back to the position that we want it to be. So uh, another easy way to kind of uh, keep our tools going from passive point you know, where you don't want it to be. So rather than having to edit the features, you can also edit the setups here. All right, let's move along to another model. And I'm going to bring this guy up here. 
actually bring up a recent. Here we go. All right, so I wanted to progress a little bit more. So this one actually has ID, um, so internal uh, features. And this is kind of what we want to focus on this part here. So same thing, just check and uh, make sure everything's defined. So I want to see that I have turn on and some kind of post. I'll say OK. And here I'm going to just extract the features. Now we could always manually create things, but I'm just going to extract just for time's sake. Um, now, if we take a look here, I have an ID feature, which is pick the entire ID profile. And that's fine. You know, the, it, it actually, you could physically uh, bore this entire uh, ID here if you wanted to. Sometimes with undercuts, you cannot, but here you can. But the thing is that this is set to a drill parameter or a drill strategy. And what that does is it only does drilling. So. Uh, any of the contours uh, within it, it's going to ignore that. It's just going to do a drill operation. If I hover over this, you can see it's just going to do a center drill and drill. So what I want to do is make sure that my strategy is set to something that can complete the, the feature. So rough finish will drill and then follow it with boring bars. And that's what we'll do. So I'll say OK. It only goes to drill because our that's our default strategy for anything ID. but um, you can actually make anything uh, be the default strategy. It's just out of the box, uh, that is the default one. So rough finish is what we're going to do. And let's just generate the ID stuff for t right now. So I'll generate this operation plan. We have our center drill, drill, for rough, and for finish. I can tell you right now, uh, this is a small part. And the tool that is going to uh, go into this is going to be way too big. So what we're going to do is let's first generate. OK, so operations are you know, there. But we're going to start changing uh, the size of the tools. We're going to basically change the tool. So I'm going to go into my bore rough. And the third tab here is our tooling tree. This is all the tools in our tool crib. And if I take a look here, this tool is going to be way too big. I can go ahead and edit the definition. All right, and if I go to the tool, you can see that the size is just going to be too too big to do any of this stuff. So um, you can uh, search for the tool in the uh, tool library, and uh, you know you might find something there. But for me, I tend to just create the tools because it's very easy, um, especially with if you say you have custom tools. Honestly, it's a it's a cutting point. You don't need to do too much, even if you had custom tools. Uh, find yourself a uh, a tool insert that kind of represents the uh, the geometry of your insert or uh, cutting point. So this is a uh, an 80 degree, degree uh, insert. But the most important part to controlling the size of this is your inscribed circle. So it, whatever tool you got in house that you're using, the boxes that uh, you know. They come with literature on them that tell you what the dimensions of your tool are. So look for an IC and input the IC here. So even if you had a solid carbide boring bar from like micro 100, it'll still tell you. Um, find your IC and put that in there. We, I'll put 0.2 for now, uh, just because that's a suitable size for at least this uh, ID here. And if I need to change the nose radius and thickness, I could do so, but not important for this uh, tool. And for the boring bar, 3 quarters of an inch diameter is definitely too big. So I'll just put a 0.2, and that should be good enough, too. So there are boring bars similar to this, uh, parameter-wise and dimension-wise. So if you find yourself using a solid bar, just go with that. Find the dimensions and input it here, and you've created yourself a, a tool that works. I'm going to say OK with this. All right. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, parameters here. Because of our boring bar size, uh, previous boring bar size, it, it took liberties with the first cut amount and all that stuff. So let's not do this. 100 thou on a tiny solid carbide, it's probably not a good idea. Um, let's just be real conservative and go 20, uh, 20, 20. 
Okay. And then for uh, allowances, I can do 5,000 and 3,000. Up to you. Everyone has a different way of uh, machining. So I'll just say OK for now. All right, good. Good deal. So now you can see that it's actually machining out. Also, it's, it's taking care of the previous uh, stock left over. So our drill had a drill point. So it's trying to machine out the drill point too. So there's that. Uh, now, one of the big things with uh, ID work uh, is actually maybe the most important thing is understanding and making sure that your retracts are safe. Um, that's the, if you don't check on that, you're gonna be crashing your machine. So let me do one thing first. I wanna use the same tool for the finish. So the finish was here and I'm just gonna drag it over the tool I created and it re uh, reestablishes the finish to the new tool. Okay. All right, so let's go into our bore rough and take a look at some important parameters to consider when you're doing ID work. Uh, number one, I'm gonna go into my NC and this is where I can control the retract uh, of the tool. So you can see there's some nice visuals here to tell you how much, how far it's gonna go and what the behavior is. I uh, definitely don't wanna go 100 thou. Um, hopefully you can do some chip management within the ID. I'll put 10 thou on retract. On Z, I don't really care so much. 100 thou is probably safe enough. Um, and radial, so how, where is it gonna, how far is it gonna position and then go in? Uh, you can do it this way. So this wants to do kind of a um, an angled uh, step in. That's fine. I, I'm okay with this. Or it can be consistent and just say, hey, we're going to go uh, 10 thou. Okay. Now, if I preview this, you can see that's changed a bit. Um, and, you know, this is going to be safe. You can see everything's kind of moving towards that. Uh, and it doesn't go past below the center line here. So that should be it for uh, ID uh, uh, work here. Uh, assuming you have the correct boring bar in there and you have your, your parameters set, uh, you should have a good uh, ID operation. Just you know, double check everything. This is uh, one of the easiest places to have a, a crash. Okay. All right, and let's go on to a different part now. So, Last part I want to cover, and it's probably the only other uh, missing part to turning, is threading. Um, how do you handle threads here? Because threading is pretty, pretty common in turning. So I, I brought up this part here where we can do a little bit of some OD threading, and I can show you how to uh, put in a thread feature. The same principles apply for ID threading, too. So um, you can't just rely on extract machinable features to create a good thread feature. Uh, part of the reason why is, is thread features need to be a straight line. You can't have it have you know, all kinds of weird contours. It's just not gonna work. So I'm gonna check my machine and post, we're okay here. And what I'm going to do now is manually create thread. So I will go into my setup and create a turn setup. That's my direction, that's fine. And then within the setup, I'm going to right click and create a turn feature. And so with this turn feature, it is going to be a, an OD feature here. And I do want this to be a thread strategy. Okay. Let's make this box active. And here, let's work on this section here. So this, this kind of looks like a thread. It's got a nice little thread of leaf if we were going to use it for that. So I'll click on this line here. Now this line is representing what would be most of the thread. We unfortunately cannot add the chamfer here or the relief, which is okay because we will take care of that later. So it needs to be a straight line for you to be, create a thread feature. Great, check here. Thread feature is good. So we'll generate that thread feature. And let's go ahead and generate this tool pass just to take a look, right? So it's just a single pass. If I needed to change the parameters of that, uh, I can do it in a couple places. Go back to the feature, go to the parameters here and change the depth and the pitch here, or go into the operation and manually change it there. So a couple places to handle that. So 
pitch, and also depth. Now, um, what we can do is to take care of this, uh, this relief here to go past it or into the relief. This is where you can go ahead and uh, add. So it's just like adding to the features, but in, in here it's specific to threading. You can add to the length, so I can add about a, maybe, let's go 125 thou and see if that uh, clears. So I'll preview this. Not quite, so let's go uh, 200 thou. Let's just really uh, get into it. All right, good. So that'll give us a good thread uh, all the way through. And if need be, it can change depths of cuts and all that stuff. So this this should give us a, a good thread uh, profile or a thread feature. Um, but one of the things that I, I do with threading is, and this could be, this was a part of my life with threading. I did a lot of long, skinny uh, bars back when I was working in the oil industry. So chatter um, uh, was a non-negotiable with threads. And to mitigate that, you had to do certain things. Part of it is also just packing, oscillating um, uh, RPMs. Those are built-in features to your machine. But you can do other things to help. You can, uh, your in-feed type can be based off of an angle. So rather than going straight down, you'd be approaching, so you're doing more uh, sidewall cutting than going straight down on the point. Uh, the pressure on the cutter is, is a bit different. You can also uh, base it off of certain uh, cut depths. So it's a constant cut depth or a constant volume. That way, again, it, it changes the way or the amount of pressure that goes onto the tool. So chatter is all about harmonics. How are you engaging with the part? Those are a couple of things that you could do to help with that. All right. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, uh, thread uh, dimensions are all here. So we've pretty much covered most of uh, turning. There's a whole lot more, but these are kind of the basics that if you had you know, what we covered today uh, kind of down, you should be able to get by uh, with quite a bit. So. Well, thanks everyone for attending. Um, I'll see if we have any questions. If you think of anything later on, let's let us know and we'll get back with you. Thanks, Dan. All right. You're welcome, guys. Have a good one.